Oh, I just want to say one more time, God is good. And you know, it's every step that we take, He's with us, and it's special to know Him, my Lord and Savior. I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You know, God's word is full of just practical tips. And I, just as I was reading that, just I, you know, another one stood out. You don't hide your lamp under a, underneath. You put it on top of a lampstand. How many of you didn't know that? <laughs> Good, you've read this verse before, huh? Jesus is speaking to believers here. You are salt. First thing that caught my eye when I was reading this passage was this. But if the salt has lost its flavor, it's then good for nothing but to be tossed out and trampled by men. In all the times, it, or in the time that this was written, most of the salt used by the common man was not pure. It was a mixture of minerals that contained much lower levels of actual salt than what you and I are used to. And if it was exposed to water, the sodium would leach out, leaving just a white residue that looked like salt, but it had no flavor. The residue was thrown on the pathway in front of the house to hold down the dust. And that's why they say in it to be trampled on. I'm going to be real straightforward this morning. Basically what this scripture says here is this. A Christian on this earth is salt. That's plain and simple. If you quit being salt, you're worthless. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. I want to be like salt. I want to be effective salt. I want to be pure salt. I don't want to be trampled on. Does anyone here like to be trampled on? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you feel like you have been this week. <laughs> trampled on just because I'm not living up to what I'm supposed to be in Christ. Or just because I'm not what I say I am. I want to be a disciple. A disciple is a follower of Christ that makes a difference in the world that we live in. Let me ask a question of you this morning. How do you as a Christian relate to the world around you? You don't have to answer that right now. But I want you to think about it. How do you as a Christian relate to the world around you? Now, if you want to give a pat answer, as a Christian, you would probably say, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And you may remember when the Israelites were being held captive in Babylon. The time came when they were set free. They were allowed to go home. But most of them didn't want to go home. Most of them wanted to stay right there in Babylon in the land of captivity. Why? Because they've become so comfortable with where they lived at in Babylon that they blended into society. They blended in so well. 
They'd become a people that no longer stood out as someone that was different. They'd been blended into a society that no one knew that they were even being held captive. How about us as Christians? Do people even know that you're a Christian? Yeah. Yeah. Do you stand out? Sure, they were Israelites, but no one saw them as anything different, as anyone different. There was nothing different about them. We don't want to be so comfortable with our surrounding that we blend in so well that no one even knows that we're a Christian. You know, when we come to know Christ, we're changed by His Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. In fact, when you pray the prayer saying, Jesus, change me, make me like you. And when you accept Christ in your life, you be begin immediately thinking differently. Mm -hmm. You begin acting differently. As the Holy Spirit changes us from the inside out. One thing to remember with this story is Jesus is speaking to the disciples here. These are already followers of Jesus, made up of men from all different walks of life. Men just like you and I. And when these men left their way of life to follow Jesus, I think that they not only sensed something about Christ's love for them. But I also think they wanted to participate in a way of life that was different. In a way of life that would show His love to those that they came in contact with. Showing His love to others. Christians come in all shapes, <laughs> sizes. All you got to do is look around you. You want to do that now? <laughs> we come in all shapes and sizes. We have all kinds of different personalities. No two of us are alike. <laughs> I hope they heard that on the video. <laughs> now I hate to say this, but some want to be a witness. Yet they turn people off. You've met Christians like that, haven't you? You may see them coming down the street, and you quickly turn and run the other way. Why? Because they're in your face. They're just right here at you all the time. Yeah, you want to say, get out of my face? I have an individual from another denomination. He wants to win me over. He wants to get me saved. <laughs> and his approach is not proper. And that type of Christian has lost their flavor. Think about that. If you're turning people off because of how you act, you have lost your flavor. Another type of Christian is one that says they're a Christian, they go to church on Sunday, yet their character and their value system reflects nothing of what they talk about. Their character is no different than anyone else. They talk it, but they don't live it. One person put it like this, if sin dims our testimony so that our light is no longer visible, some of those we might have influenced for Christ may drift on in spiritual darkness. You know, it carries a kind of a load with you that you want people to see who you are in Christ. You want people to see Christ through you. And then we have another type of Christian. It's what I'm going to call the contagious Christian. 
Their walk is the same as their talk. They're a pleasure to be around. They reflect Christ in every part of their life. They draw people to Christ. Mm -hmm. They demonstrate their faith even when they don't know anyone else is watching. Those that are watching you want to see how you handle your struggles. They want to see how you react when someone else does you wrong. In other words, they want to know if your faith is real. So I'm going to tell you right now this morning, I want to be a contagious Christian. I want to infect others. Did you get that? I want to infect others with the love of Christ. I was talking to somebody this past week. He brought up the name of a couple that attends this church. And I'm pleased to say that everything he said about you reflects the life of a contagious Christian. When I read our text this morning, I noticed something that I hadn't seen before. Jesus says nothing about what we have to say as a Christian. Have you notice that? In that passage? If any of you have ever sat in a class about how to be a witness, you would have learned about, some of you probably heard what we call the Roman road. Yeah. Leading somebody to Christ out of the book of Romans. Some of you have heard about the four spiritual laws. <clears throat> along with other many other methods of witnessing. All of them telling you what to say. And I'm going to tell you, I have led some of those classes also. Always telling people what to say in order to be an effective witness. But what must happen to salt for it to be effective? It has to be used. It has to be put into action. Salt in the Bible days, was used as a preservative, and it's even used that way today. It would keep food from spoiling. You take the salt, rub it in on meat. By the time you're rubbing it, you don't even see it. And after that was done, you wouldn't even know that it had been salted until you tasted it. Salt has to be used to be effective. Salt has to have contact with something to be effective. Salt is not effective when it's left in the container. You say, where are you going with this? <laughs> Are you being used? <clears throat> or are you still in a container? You may have the look of salts. You may have the taste of salts. But if you're not being used, you're useless. I know that sounds kind of harsh this morning. But think about it for a minute. Let's move on to verse 14 for just a moment. You're not only salt, you are the light of the world. If it's dark, what do we do? I figured I'd have a whole bunch of responses to that. If it's dark, what do we do? Thank you. I know you've heard this many times, but you are the light that dispels darkness. Mm -hmm. If you walk into a dark place and the light doesn't shine, you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. If you're in a dark place, yeah. turn the light on. 
Sounds so basic, but if you're in a dark place, turn the light on. Dispel the darkness wherever you go. I want to share with you a few things someone told me about light. Light is energy. Sunlight is the Earth's energy source. Indirectly, all of our fuel, even the food we eat, traces back to the energy of the sun. Light reveals. You need to find something in a dark place, what do you do? You either turn the light on or you go get a flashlight. Light heals. Many wounds require lights in the process of healing. Lights kills mold and mildew. Now, hearing that, I remind you, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You can bring healing into somebody's life. Mm -hmm. you. you can kill the crud, the mold and the mildew that makes people sick. Come on. You can make a difference in somebody's life. There could be no low-profile Christians. <laughs> There's not a such thing as a secret saint. There's no private spirituality. We have a responsibility to stand tall to let the light of Christ shine through us. To scatter the darkness on the face of this earth. Amen. Hallelujah. You've got a responsibility. People who are looking at Christianity don't necessarily expect to find perfect people. No. No. What they want to see is this. Someone with the courage to admit their faults and make things right when they've done someone wrong. They want to see a genuine Christian. They want to see genuine Christianity. Why? Because they want something that's real. Yeah. If you're being fake, they don't want to be around you. They know. A lot of friends that are on the streets in one way or another. That's what they call street sense. Mm -hmm. People know if you're real. I was listening to a friend's testimony that before he had given his heart to the Lord, he was just beginning to search. He's in Pelican Bay State Prison and he's carrying his Bible. And he says, but if anyone said anything, I would have dropped my Bible and beat him to death. <laughs> I'm still trying to get him up here to share his testimony <laughs> you are the salt and you are the light of the world use it and let it shine final words use it and let it shine Right. Heavenly Father, I love you so much. God, it's just been a pleasure to be here in your house and sharing your word with this congregation this morning. Father, I pray that each one here is encouraged, Lord, to let their light shine. Let it shine. Father, we're not perfect. But we strive for perfection in you, as Paul stated in the Word. We strive for perfection in you, Lord. And I thank you. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> for caring enough. struggle. 
Would you like us to pray with you, God? You don't need to say anything. Just raise your hands. See those hands. Numerous hands. Numerous hands. Thank you. Thank you. Just because you're the light of the world doesn't mean that you don't need help. That you don't need a strength to guide you along the way.